Hello students, the topic of my lecture today is the theme of migration in Eddie Hope's poem, The Dead of the Bird. Before jumping directly into the crux of the lecture, I would like to briefly introduce the poet to you. Alec Derwent Hope, popularly known as A.D. Hope, is an eminent Australian poet who is well known for his elegies and satires. In fact, he started publishing his poems when he was just 14 years old. Besides receiving his education in Australia, he went to the University of Oxford on a scholarship. As well as being a poet, he was an essayist, a critic, an academic and a teacher. Now let me begin with the critical analysis of the poem, The Dead of the Bird. This analysis with help in discovering the theme of migration present in the poem. Let me read out the first stanza of the poem to you. For every bird there is this last migration. Once more the cooling year kindles her heart. With a warm passage to the summer station, love breaks the course in lights across the chart. The very first line of the poem, for every bird there is this last migration, introduces the reader to the theme of migration through the figure of a migratory bird. The mention of the word last suggests that the bird is nearing her death. This poem is a lyric poem. It consists of nine quatrains. Each follows the alternate rhyme, the ABAB -A -B rhyme scheme. The music of the poem carries a mood that refrains from over-sentimentalizing of the imminent death of the migratory bird. Even the last quatrain lacks glorification or romanticization of the dead. Unlike Earlier poems like John Keats' Ode to a Nightingale or P.B. Shelley's To a Skylark, Hope's poem does not glorify the beauty of the bird. Rather, it focuses on its insignificance in relation to the vastness of the art. The triviality of her death is described by the concluding two lines of the poem and the great art with neither grief nor malice, receives the tiny burden of her death. The irony of the death of the bird lies in the fact that, despite having traveled the vast world during her lifetime, the great art treats her death indifferently, seeing her as just a tiny burden. The poem emanates the theme of aging and death in the first reading of the poem. Through the use of the extended metaphor of the bird, the poet seems to point out that all lives that begin with birth are bound to end in death. The signs of senescence, aging and death prove the transient nature of life and man as an immortal being. However, the poet makes sure that he is not talking of any random bird, but the bird, a specific bird. This is evident from the use of the article the before bird in the title of the poem, The Dead of the Bird. The bird here is a migratory bird. The migration undertaken by the bird can be compared to the journey of life undertaken by men. The bird's final migration is an inevitable journey that each individual has to undertake, the journey towards one's own death. Besides this theme of aging and death, more interpretations can be derived from the seemingly simple lines of the poem through a close reading of the poem. If we read this poem by contextualizing it within the backdrop of the colonial history of Australia, a much deeper significance of migration can be discovered. Colonial history of Australia can be traced back to the British settlement in Australia that began with the arrival of the first fleet of ships in 1788 at Sydney, South Wales for the establishment of Pinal Colony for keeping convicts in captivity and scientific exploration. Later, more European colonies were set up and the colonizers free settlers and convicts started settling in the new land, outnumbering the original inhabitants of the land. 
the aboriginals. Australia's isolation from other continents due to its geographical location in the southern hemisphere explains much of the singularity of its flora and fauna. Domesticating the alien land was a big challenge owing to the vast landscape and variable climatic condition which they had never witnessed before in England. Australian critic Anna Rutherford in her essay The Land as Protagonist with special reference to exploration mentions how the land acts as a dominant figure in Australian literature. Australian poet Judith Wright talks of the double aspect of Australia in describing the oppositional attitudes of European settlers towards the Australian landscape. One, as a hostile and alien space, and two, as a liberating one. A.D. Hobbes' poem, Australia, projects these two groups of people, one who is exploitative, parasitic, and selfish, and the other one, including the poet himself, who could see the potential of Australia of becoming a civilization. Now, if we keep this historical background in mind and proceed with the analysis of the poem, The Dead of the Bird, a post-colonial perspective of the poem can be brought out. In the poem, the third stanza talks of the memory of home and how this memory helped the bird in bringing up her offspring and creating a new home. This longing for the home and memory of the home can be related to the state of mind of the European migrants who is struggling to establish a home in the new land but at the same time constantly yearning for the mother country England, still considering her to be their homeland. Judith Wright was of the opinion that these transplanted Europeans can stop being a second-class European and start forming a unique Australian identity only when they begin to let go of their European past. Now, if we read the poem in a bigger context of globalization, we can bring in the concept of diaspora. The term diaspora is very much invoked in the discussion of migrants and migration in the contemporary academic circle. Generally, diaspora is used for referring to those people who have migrated from their ancestral homeland to a host country, either voluntarily or non-voluntarily, such as exiles, refugees, expatriates, and immigrants. Today, there are different diaspora communities spread across the globe like Chinese, Jewish, and Indian. In the past, migration was a mass movement and now it has mostly turned into an individual movement. With the rapid globalization, the population of expatriates across the world is increasingly growing. According to the scholars of diaspora studies like William Saffron and Robin Cohen, homeland has a complex significance in the understanding of the concept of diaspora. It is the homeland that evokes an ethno-communal consciousness in the diaspora community. To the diaspora, the homeland remains not just a physical space but it has a psychological dimension as well. It is more of an idealized mental space saved in their memory which they are constantly yearning to reclaim. Such homelands are called imaginary homelands by Salman Rushdie as the perception of the homeland may vary from person to person and above all differ from reality. The passionate longing for the homeland by the migrants can be identified in the lines of the poem The Dead of the Bird. Aware of ghosts that haunt the heart's possession and exile love mourning within the breast. Moreover, a sense of displacement and dislocation is associated with the migration as the diaspora go through the pain of grappling between the home country and the host country. The line, going away, she is also coming home, 
suggests the need of creating a new home in the new land to overcome the pain of displacement and loneliness of the migrants. In the contemporary context of globalization, migration has become a very common phenomenon, especially for the expatriates who, in search of opportunities and progress, very often travel crossing the territorial borders, just like the migratory bird flying every winter in search of a summer station, a warmer place where they can survive. In this modern society, most people seem to engage themselves in the red race, and in the process, many are bound to migrate, hoping that the grass will be greener on the other side. The fourth, fifth, and sixth stanzas give a fine description of an exotic, unknown, and uncertain landscape and the aging bird yet again being subject to the lure of a far away space. To make it more vivid to you, let me read out these three stanzas to you. The sands are green with a mirage of valleys. The palm tree casts a shadow not its own. Down the long architrave of temple or palace blows the cool air from moorland scraps of stone. And day by day the whisper of love grows stronger. That delicate voice more urgent with despair, custom and fear constraining her no longer, drives her at last on the west leagues of air. A vanishing speck in those inland dominions, single and frail, uncertain of our place, alone in the bright host of our companions, lost in the blue unfriendliness of space. The last three stanzas, 7, 8, and 9, give the description of the abrupt death of the bird, her strong desire of marking yet another speck on the map is circumscribed by death, the great equalizer. A parallel can be drawn between the life of the migratory bird and those diaspora who always hope to return to the ancestral land someday, but somehow keep postponing their homecoming instead ultimately die in the host country. To sum up with my lecture, I would like to state that when the poem, The Dead of the Bird, is read symbolically, we come to realize the concept of migration in a more nuanced way. The understanding of migration is no longer restricted just to the crossing of territorial borders, but extends to the concept of displacement, dislocation, isolation, memory, and homeland. Though this poem was published in 1948, it can be read in relation to the experience of the European migrants living during the colonial and the post-colonial period of Australia. This poem also finds its relevance at the present era of globalization. Thus, it will be not wrong to conclude that the beauty of the poem, The Death of the Bird, lies in the timelessness nature of the poem. I hope this lecture proved insightful to you all. If you have any doubt or query, you can contact me through the website of the college. Thank you. Thank you.